Hi guys, welcome back to Oily Skin Diaries week day five. We are over halfway through. I've been testing out foundations all this week, seven days of reviews, and I will link to my previous reviews down below. Today we're chatting about some brand new items from Sephora Collection. I have their new stick foundation along with their new concealer, so let's go ahead and get started. Recently, Sephora Collection, which is the Sephora in-house brand, released this, which is the Make No Mistakes Foundation and Concealer Stick. It comes in 16 different shades, which I think is amazing. I think Sephora does a really good job, their in-house brand, of having a really wide range. If you just look, because it can be overlooked sometimes, at their complexion products, it is super wide. Some of the lines have like 25 products in there of different shades, and I will link to a previous review I've done of one of their powder foundations as well. Not only does it come in a great range of shades, but it is also very affordable. It's $20 American, $25 Canadian, which is a much less than anything available at Sephora and basically on par with some foundations here in Canada at the drugstore. But not only is it a great price at a glance, you get 11 grams of product in here, which is quite high for a stick foundation. So to compare with some kind of, I guess, more popular stick foundations, I'm looking at my cheat sheet here, you're getting 0.41 ounces in here. In Makeup Forever, you're getting 0.44. In Anastasia, you're getting 0.35. And then in Hourglass, you're only getting 0.25. So this is almost double, basically double the size of one of those. The same can basically be said for the Make No Mistakes Concealer. This is retailing for $14 American, $18 Canadian. So again, not incredibly cheap by any means, but definitely affordable in the spectrum of products that are available out right now because the price of makeup just seems to continually increase and again you're getting a great amount of product in here. You're getting 10 milliliters of product in here in the NARS Radiant Creamy, you're getting 6 in Urban Decay Naked, you are getting five and then in the it cosmetics bye bye under eye because it's kind of in a similar format you are getting eight so this has by far more concealer in here than a lot of them and this is a super thick concealer and a little goes a very long way so let's go ahead and get into application i will talk you through the claims a little bit that way as well and i'm just going to prime this half of my face and see how that affects the wear throughout the day so I have lots of breakouts, so we'll be able to put the coverage to the test. I'm wearing the shade 10 Cedar, and I'm an NC42 in MAC. It claims to be good for all skin types, have a natural matte finish with medium coverage. I really have been enjoying stick products lately, mostly, hey Ru, for contour, um, but I haven't found like a stick foundation that I really love yet. I'm just gonna build it up slightly. I haven't tried this with the Beauty Blender. It's like a, it's a thick consistency, but it's not hard to blend by any means. I'm just gonna build it up on this side a little bit more. It definitely seems to have a medium coverage. It feels really nice and light on the skin. And let me know down below what your favorite Sephora collection products are. I love their airbrush foundation and I love their um, cream matte lip stains. Those are awesome. So let's go ahead and move on to the concealer. It claims to be full coverage, have a natural matte finish. Again, good for all skin types. Um, this is a super thick concealer, so you only need like the tiniest bit. It says that it is ultra lightweight, good for hyperpigmentation, dark circles, a little bit of everything. I think you could use this on your face too, for sure. I, I have one that's a little bit more, um, a little bit lighter than my skin type to try and brighten up my under eyes a little bit, and I do really like it. I wouldn't say that it's incredibly lightweight because it is so full coverage and thick, but it doesn't feel heavy under the eyes, but go really lightly. And I'm wearing the shade 10 Vanilla Bean, and these concealers go really deep. Um, I feel like a lot of the time concealers are, they go to like medium deep or like a fake deep, but these seem, when, when I saw them in store, they go seem to go really deep. So I think it adds a really nice amount of brightness under my eyes. It doesn't feel heavy on the skin, um, and it does really give a lot of coverage. I'm sorry, my cat is meowing a lot. <laughs> So I'm going to go ahead and put on the rest of my makeup and we will chat about the flash photo test. So far I think it looks really good. It has built up to a medium coverage, feels incredibly lightweight on the skin, especially the, uh, the foundation feels so lightweight and I have worn this a few times and it has performed well so I'm curious to see how it performs during this test. I have just primed this half of my face and as of right now they look about the same but we'll see if that helps with longevity. 
I have the rest of my makeup on now and not only do I love the way that this foundation looks, it just looks like nothing on the skin. It is so beautiful and buildable but I also love the way that it feels or doesn't feel because I cannot feel it on my skin at all. So that is a great start for me. The concealer as well it looks really good. I'm wearing one of my favorite Sephora cream lip stains. I will list everything that I'm wearing on my face down below. As for photo test, I think it performed really well. It doesn't have any claims to have SPF in there but sometimes things can get a little bit wonky. So when I took a photo just here in my studio lighting, I thought it looked really good, quite natural on the skin. And then in flash photo, I think the foundation performed really, really well. There's definitely a lot of lightness under my eyes, but I think that that's the Makeup Forever powder I used to set under my eyes. But as you can see, the rest of my actual face looks quite good. And I have worn this a few times and not had any issues with flashbacks. So, and as I've said before, I mean, there's very few times that I'm out at night taking photos. So it's not a huge issue for me, but of course, something to be noted because there's nothing worse than after a night out taking a look at your photos and you're like ghostly in a group of your friends so anyways I'm gonna go ahead about my day and I will check back with you midway to show you how this is all holding up so it is time for my midday check-in I have been out all morning so I'm doing this a little bit later than normal I am gonna blot however it is like oh man it's really bad outside it's like 30 degrees but the leaves are also falling. It's really confusing, global warming. Anyways, I think that the foundation looks really good considering my face was like actually sweaty because it's so hot and humid outside. And I got an Uber home and I just kind of like let the wind blow on my face and let the sweat kind of go away. Is that too much information? But I am gonna blot. However, it does look amazing. The concealer still looks really good. So we will see how it holds up now that I'm out of the um, crazy heat, but it hasn't broken up on my face. Ah! Ow! Rue. Sorry, dirty, <laughs> dirty makeup cloth. So I was just swatching some stuff. Um, she didn't actually hurt me. She was just stretching out and um, put her claws into me. <laughs> she doesn't beat me, I swear. Anyways, um, yeah, so I'm gonna go ahead about the rest of my day and I'll check back with you at the end of it. It's now the end of the evening for me and I think that things held up really well. I am a little bit shiny again, so I am just going to powder, but overall, I think this foundation held up really well. It did not oxidize, it didn't patch away. It held up really nicely considering it was really, really hot outside and really humid when I was out earlier. So that to me is super impressive. It does a good job after I've blotted and powdered because sometimes foundations, if you are oily and you go to a blot, sometimes it can remove the foundation and that's not the case here. It has a really nice buildable amount of coverage, a great price, you get a lot of product in there, lots of shades, and I haven't actually tried it as a concealer. I don't have a shade that's light enough for me, but I do think it could act like a really great cream contour as well. The primed side was slightly more mattified than the unprimed side, but I gotta say I'm really impressed with this foundation. I think it would be great for oily skin. If you have combination or normal, I think you'll like it as well. And I didn't find like it was an incredibly matte finish, so if you do have dry skin, you may be able to get away with it. If you have tried this foundation, no matter your skin type, be sure to let us know down below how you enjoyed it. But overall, I will definitely be continuing to wear this, and I just love the stick format. I think it's so easy to use. And as for the concealer, I like it. It has settled in my lines a little bit, but I mean, it's the nature of the beast with concealer. Uh, it's nothing that is super intense and no more than any other concealer it does on the average day. Again, same can be said for the concealer as the foundation. A great amount of product in there, a great number of shades, and it seems to live up to its claims of being a quite full coverage. Overall, I really like both of these products. I definitely recommend that you give them a try. I think Sephora Collection can be totally overlooked sometimes, and I think that they make some really great products, and they're a really good price as well. So let me know down below if you have tried this product, and be sure to stay tuned for tomorrow's video. I have a, another stick foundation in the works. If you'd like to connect with me, you can find me on Instagram, Twitter, and Snapchat, at SamanthaJaneYT, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.